This is a voltaic cell. Notice we don't have any battery, any power source attached here because this is the power source. This is a battery. This is what a battery is made of. At the moment, it's not generating electricity. And why not? We'll get to just now. But let's just first look at its components. Here we have an electrode made of copper. Inside, a solution of copper ions. Here we have an electrode made of zinc. Inside, a solution of zinc ions. They are connected via these crocodile clips to a multimeter set as a voltmeter, which is not reading anything at the moment because at the moment they are not generating a potential difference across them. There we can see the completion of that circuit there. Once this is working, we will see that it's working by the fact that a potential difference will be registered on this voltmeter. So why isn't it working yet? The problem is we don't have a complete circuit. Notice that in between the two electrodes and the solutions, there's a gap. And so we know that with electricity, you have to have a complete circuit in order for electricity to flow. So we're going to complete that circuit with an ion bridge. An ion bridge is a solution which bridges across the two half cells of the voltaic cell. And notice as we put it in, the reading registers on the voltmeter. Here we have an ionic substance inside a U-shaped tube. And that's allowing the conduction of electricity through between the two half cells. Now what is happening here? As I said, in this cell we have both copper atoms in the, the rod and copper ions, Cu2+, plus, in the solution. And here we have zinc atoms and zinc ions. Now elements prefer, I could say, to be in the ionic state. They, they are stablest in the ionic state because then they have a noble gas electron configuration. So the zinc wants to be in the form of zinc ions and the copper wants to be in the form of copper ions. And the zinc here doesn't want to be in the atom form, it wants to be in the, the iron form. And the same with that copper rod as well. So what do they have to do to become ions? If these zinc atoms over here, you can see them there in the back, could lose two electrons per atom, then they would be zinc ions. They would be stable. But in order for them to do so, they'd have to find something willing to accept those electrons from them. Now, this zinc over here, it via the wire detects the presence of that copper there. Now that copper would also really like to be in the ion form which is stabler, but unfortunately for that copper, it is less reactive than the zinc is. And so the stronger zinc forces the copper to accept two electrons per atom. It sends via this external circuit two electrons per atom along. And in so doing, the zinc atoms can become zinc ions in the solution there. And then they are stable. The poor copper ions, they have no choice in the matter. They have to accept the electrons shoved on them by the zinc. And in so doing, they stop being copper ions and they precipitate on this copper rod, adding more copper to this rod, more copper atoms. So we say the more reactive metal, zinc, is oxidized. Oxidation means the loss of electrons. As the zinc atoms are oxidized, they change into zinc ions, and zinc ions are soluble, and they go into solution. So the zinc electrode gets corroded, and we might be able to see that. It's not very visible, though, but if you were to measure the mass of the zinc electrode before and after, you would see that the mass would drop a bit because of that corrosion of zinc atoms changing to zinc ions. Meanwhile, at the copper electrode, the copper ions in the solution 
are reduced to copper atoms. Reduction is the gain of electrons. And in the process, we get a deposition of copper on here. Now, that's also not very visible. But if you were to measure the mass of the copper afterwards, you would, if you had a sensitive enough scale, find that the mass had increased. You'll also see, although not over the short period of this movie, but if you were to leave this long enough, that the color of the, the blue here would become lighter as the copper ions change into brown copper. As positive zinc ions gather in this half cell and copper positive ions get removed from this half cell, there develops a potential difference between the solutions. And that's why we need, or well, another reason why we need this iron bridge, because positive ions will move that direction from the, the zinc solution to the copper solution to complete the circuit and also to reduce the buildup of positive charge there and stop the depletion of positive charge over there. What about the movement of electrons? Remember at this electrode here, we call it the anode because that's where oxidation is happening, the loss of electrons. The zinc is changing into zinc ions and in the process letting free two electrons per atom. Those two electrons per atom gather here on the electrode making it to be negatively charged. They can't just stay there. They move along the Y, the external wire and then they come along here to this electrode. We call that the cathode because that's where reduction happens and there they get accepted by the copper 2 plus ions and that's what changes the ions into the copper atoms.